fellow YouTube Easygoing MC back with another episode of Easygoing Survival. We're on episode 33, and today we're gonna be building an auto brewer. So, guys, um, yeah. So, I've this is a long story. Um, the audio got a little messed up for this video. I think I had things turned off weird on my QuickTime player, my recording software. And I didn't realize it, so this is actually being recorded afterwards, which I haven't done in almost a year now. So, yeah. But we're building on a brewer, so this is the design that I constructed while I was driving cross-country right here. So it's a very, it's not one wide, but it does have, gives you easy access to all the dispensers, or droppers I mean. And it's really quite nice. So it basically works with torch towers to power those droppers. And you have water bottle and blaze powder inputs into the side so yeah and then you have an output right there it's controlled by a hopper clock and yeah it's very nice yeah the droppers hold all the stuff uh, the top two droppers are actually toggleable so in this example I have just gunpowder and um, dragon's breath in there but you can put a fermented spider eye if you want to switch the potion effects around or something like that uh, that's always a possibility for sure um, but yeah, so the top two are toggleable, which is pretty nice in my opinion. Um, and yeah, I like this design a lot. It's, yeah, it's worked really, really well. Um, yeah. I picked it because it had easy access to all the droppers, and the blaze powder and water bottle input was very easy as well. So that, that's the main reason why I picked it. Um, but yeah, it works really well, and I guess we're going to start building that soon on Easygoing Survival. Um, I'm not really sure what I'm talking about right now in this. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm really sorry about this audio, though, guys. I wasn't really sure about the QuickTime player. Uh, it's kind of weird. I haven't really ever... It's kind of, it's weird doing this, because I, I chit-chat a lot with you guys in the video, so it's kind of weird doing this. Um, back again. And I'm sorry if I voiced a little hoarse throughout this. I've had a little bit of a cold, so... Alright, now this right here, so the reason why there's 27 items each renamed is because it takes 27 items in the hopper clock for one brewing cycle. So if you have 5 ingredients going through, you need all 5 sets of 27, but if you only had 3, because you can turn the top 2 off on all of them if you wanted to, you only need 3 sets of 27, so that just allows it to move faster if you're brewing less potions. Um, so yeah, that, that's a cool feature I figured out, I guess. Um, yeah. Yeah, basically, those torches keep the water bottles in, and then when it switches, it goes into a comparator pulse extender, which flip-flops those at the same rate, and yeah, it just works out extremely well. Um, I think I'm showing you guys it in action now, speeding it up a little bit, because it doesn't need to go through the entire cycle. So, as you can see, the comparator pulse extender goes, the potions are dropped out, that's recycled, and the water bottles enter in. And all the potions go into the chest, and it works like a charm. Um, yeah. So yeah, guys, it's perfect. Um, and now basically we're going to go start to build that on our world. Uh, so in the next cut, what you're going to see is an area dug out. And I'm going to have a bunch of materials gathered. I'm going to gather all these stuff in those shulker boxes that I duped. Which, by the way, guys, I'm going to decide to keep those just because it does... I have a, very, I have a, nice, I have a nice conversation with Dom... Uh, who's one of my long, long time subscribers, I think now. So, yeah, I think it just will help save time. I don't have infinite times to play this, especially now that school starting. I'm gonna be. This is one of my busiest years of school yet. So, yeah, it's gonna be. It's gonna be a busy one. Um. But yeah, let's get back onto that world. Um. Yeah, I'm not really sure. I, I chit chat a lot. Uh, it's, it's weird going back. I, I don't know how I did this before. I don't really like doing this anymore. Um, it's easier just to talk. I'm glad I learned how to do live recording. That's that's very important that I learned how to do that because that's I feel like that's more natural. Um, but this is nice. This is more like me just talking to you guys uh, staring at me working. So it's kind of weird. I don't know. So yeah, uh, now the cut's happening, guys. I'm sorry for that. It's a little more faster paced now, so it should be just a little better. Um, there's just one other clip that's kind of long, but I have an idea of what we're going to talk about in that, so that's okay. Whoa, that, 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 it was pretty laggy, but I just saw there, but, um, sorry. Um, 
But yeah, that's the area we dug out. So as you can see, I have that stone template laid out. And actually what I'm thinking we're going to do is we're going to... Yeah, we're going to build another bridge there. We actually build a bridge there later in the episode, at the very end of it. Uh, no, we don't build a bridge there. We build a bridge in another spot, actually. But yeah, we've dug out of this massive area. I'm pretty sure I'd dig out more, though, in between this clip and the next. But yeah, it's worked out... Working out pretty well. So I actually decided now we're going to have more areas to our base. So the current area we've only built in, so the are the... I guess we have Villager Cave, that's one area of our base. That's Stone Area, I think that's considered a separate area. And then we have, you know, like the, the Dark Oak, Rustic kind of themed with the green clay and stuff like that area. So all the storage system and things like that. And then coming across there, in the middle between these two bridges, we're going to have a Prismarine area, which I start working on later in this episode. Uh, coming from the Brewing area going across, we'll have a Nether area. And then coming back from that Nether area over to this end of the mountain we'll have a modern area of like quartz and stuff like that so that should be that should be pretty cool it's like a modern slash greek architecture that's what i'm kind of thinking for that so that should be pretty awesome i can't wait to start working on that parts of the base and then we'll have another part which we started to dig out underneath which would be kind of like the madhouse we're gonna use lots of colors down there uh where all the animal farms are gonna be uh that that's gonna be starting on that in the future we've already dug out a massive hole which you can find actually in some of the live stream replays but now I'm going to start constructing the brewing stand. As you can see, I've gathered up a bunch of supplies uh, from the witch farm and just crafted some stuff. Um, but yeah, the next few episodes, guys, are going to be focusing on getting some farms for some of these things. As you know, we don't have another word farm. We don't have any of those types of things. Um, but yeah, as you can see, I've laid out all the droppers, hoppers, and the chests for the most part, including the brewing stand. So yeah, I have most of the groundwork done. I have the template. Now we have to put in the redstone, of course. Um, so yeah, there's two parts of the redstone in this. It's all the torch towers and the repeaters and all the repeating stuff. And then you have the timing circuit, which is the complicated part, I guess you could say. Um, yeah. We don't actually finish this completely today. We don't add the toggleable stuff just because I don't have... I still don't even have the building blocks for this room yet because I want to use red nether brick, but I don't have a nether ward farm. So yeah, that's the only issue. Um... But yeah, that's that's where we're going to start working on some of that stuff in the future, um, for sure. I'm just looking for where that long clip is. I can't, I think it's that clip right there. But yeah, so, as you can see, I've set this little temporary netherwort farm up at spawn. So this, this we can use this for now to get some netherwort collected so we can build a fairly massive farm somewhere. Uh, probably in the nether area. That's probably where we'll have it. We'll probably have it in that in that mountain to the left there. Can't, can't, can't really see it. Um, but yeah. I'm sorry I'm saying um a lot. Uh, I, I can notice that. It's hard for me to do this right now. Because I'm trying to think of things to talk about. But yeah. So I almost said um there. But I didn't see it. See I got it guys. Um, I, I, see guys. I, I really can't. I really can't stop it. Um, oh my god. It's just, it's just a nervous habit. Or whatever. So. We're moving back, and now I have completed some more redstone. I was kind of in that hole because I actually died. Long story, long story. He's flying with the Elytra, messing around like the hole where the beacon is and stuff like that. And experienced kinetic en energy, as Minecraft would say. So I did die there. Um, yeah. Um, coming over here, we have... Oh yeah, all the redstone, basic redstone stuff laid out. So all the torch towers, all the repeaters... All sorts of stuff. So now all we have left to do is actually the timing circuit, which is actually really quite simple. Uh, we're going to throw in an extra on-off switch in there too. Just for fun, because that's always cool. Um, but yeah. So this thing really came together nicely. It's really easily built in survival. It's really just autonomous. You just kind of build layer by layer. Um, that's how I did it, sort of. Going up with the droppers and hoppers, and then also with the repeaters and things like that, and the torch towers. But yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure where we're going. Oh, we're checking on the netherwort farm, which is not loaded, because crops don't grow in your spawn chunks. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's not grown. Um, yeah, but if we fly around, fly around, zip around a little bit more, we'll land back in here. And yeah, we'll continue to work on this, and now it's all done. 
as you can see. So we have the timing circuit in. Uh, we have a basic on-off switch. Now this is the long clip where I'm going to kind of talk to you guys about something. It has to do with live streaming and internet and, th and things like that. Sorry guys, my throat caught a little bit there. Um, it's going to happen on long things like this, right? So, yeah, live streaming. I want to continue to live stream. That's something I think will help my channel out and gain more subscribers, uh, which I probably will talk to you guys a little bit about in this clip as well. But yeah, this is the on-off switch. That's about all we're going to do. I think we go rename some stuff so you guys can want to watch me just finish up this farm while I talk to you. Kind of like a time-lapse chat. Um, but yeah, so live streaming. I was in an area where internet was cheaper for the summer, so we were able to get faster internet for much cheaper than the internet where I am now. So we're, I think I might be able to get faster internet soon, it, but it's just not fast enough yet for me to be, I think I can, I think I'm able to stream, but I'm not able to stream and then load the stream chat on my phone at the same time. That's the only issue. I don't think I can do that. So I'd like to get slightly faster internet, hopefully. Uh, I'm not sure how much more it will cost per month. I have to take that into consideration, of course. Uh, if not, if I won't, I'm going to try to stream every Saturday, even with the bad internet, and hope it works. Um, and all the streams from now on will probably just be on Saturdays, guys. I probably won't be streaming during the week. School actually starts for me. If I release this video tomorrow, which is a Monday, um, school starts for me on a Thursday. So, yeah, I don't. I, summer's over for me now, unfortunately. So, yeah. Um, don't expect, still expect videos, though. I hope they get at least an easygoing survival episode out per weekend. I think I'll be able to, I'm going to work, I, last, last year I didn't have very good time, time management skills and homework management skills, but this year I'm going to work on that. But I am in, uh, cross country this fall, so I will be a little busier for then, because I, but, you know, I, I will, I will have Saturday nights free because those meets don't last all day because there's only a few races. Uh, just a girls and a boys race and then JV varsity. But um, besides that, uh, the other thing I want to talk to you guys about is actually just my channel in general. So I'm sure some of you guys probably noticed that over the summer, uh, well, I'll start back from the beginning. So I took a long break last spring, yada, yada, yada. That was, that's ancient news at this point. Um, but I basically didn't upload from like end of this, like beginning of January all the way into like March something I didn't upload at all and I started uploading again and I had had 17 subscribers before I quit and I got five over the course of that three months or whatever and I gave, managed to get to 50 by about June beginning of June and I'm currently sat at 68 so I only gained 18 guys over the entire summer so I didn't my channel really didn't do that well over the summer I was expecting to maybe even hit 100 by this point um which obviously, obviously I didn't. I'm at 68 right now. So, yeah. But when I started streaming, guys, and now that I've kept doing these easygoing survival episodes more frequently, I'm pretty sure it's catching on a little bit now just because in the past couple of days, my channel has been doing well again. Um, I, I would always check my subscriber count like obsessively like twice a day, and then eventually I had to stop checking it because it just unmotivate me. And I finally checked it after a week, and I had 65. I was like, cool. That's awesome. I have 65. I gained three because I had 62 before that. So this was a couple days ago. And now I have 68. Uh, I even had like I had 67 this morning. I gained 68 over the course of the day because I just checked again. So that that's really cool, guys. I'm glad that some of you guys are actually subscribing again. Uh, I think the key to my channel success is to upload one easygoing survival episode a week and one redstone video a week, which is why I'm trying to not design use any other people's designs for farms anymore. Uh, I'm going to stop doing that just because when I design a farm, I can make a tutorial about that farm. And my redstone videos are what gets me on my subscribers. And then I find that people who watch my redstone videos also enjoy these easygoing survival videos because of cool builds like, you know, like the Villager Cave, which I just ran through, which I strongly suggest you go check out episode 28, which, yeah, episode 28, I think, is when we did that. Uh, that that was one of my favorite projects. I'm really glad how that turned out. It looks amazing, in my opinion. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah. I'm glad my channel is starting to do well again. I'm going to continue to live stream. I think that also has helped a little bit. Um, 
but yeah, I'm glad that you guys are enjoying my stuff again. And please, if you ever have any things that any like critic criticisms, please drop them below in the description. I'd really love to hear those. Uh, I, it really helps me. Uh, I think my video quality has in improved over the course of the summer. I think my audio has improved. I have a boom arm now. Uh, I've learned to speak loudly. I'm not afraid to speak loudly into the microphone. I'm not afraid to disturb the people I live with. Uh, I kind of owned it to them, I guess. I'm a Minecraft YouTuber. But, um, yeah, I think, I think my audio quality has improved. I figured out that when I increase, like, the slider, like, I can increase the volume of, like, my talking on it, that, like, really, really messes up the audio quality. Like, it sounds horrible. But if I don't touch it, then the audio sounds much smoother after I put it through, like, the the background noise thing as well. So I decided I'm going to do that instead of constantly raising and lowering my volume just because it messes with the quality of it. I'd rather my audio be smooth and have to listen to it on full blast than to have it be loud and very, very crappy. So that's just my take on it. But yeah, um, that was kind of a little discussion about YouTube in general and just my thoughts about it. Uh, this is kind of like a, you know, it's time... Well, we did a lot of work. I had a lot of good audio recorded, though my voice was much hoarser when I was recording a lot of this. Um, but yeah, I'm glad we just get to have a nice discussion, I guess. So it's, it's, it's really just nice discussing with you guys. I know probably this isn't the best video for gaining subscribers, just because it's probably not the most enthusing, but I know some of you guys who are long-time subscribers probably enjoy this. But that's good. So that's very good. So we'll be building a bridge out in this direction. That'll be the Prismarine section of our base. Because that used to be, that room we are just in, was our old brewing area. And now, of course, we have this, so we don't need it anymore. So we'll convert that into the Prismarine section. So that'll be a, we'll decorate that Prismarine style, make it look really good. And have like the Prismarine bridge go across into a nice prismarine area. And in terms of what I want to put in this area, guys, I really have no idea. Um... Here's the rooms I know I need to build. I need to have an enchanted room, enchanting room. I have to have, like, a bedroom probably would be nice. Um, but I'm not really sure. I'm. It's just going to be cool cool things I think of to put in there, to be honest. Um, but, yeah. Um, we're back, and I laid out a template for this bridge. Um, I originally tried to do that too wide thing, like, too diagonal at the time, like, up to over one, but I decided to just do over one, over one, diagonal, perfect diagonal. It just looked a lot better. It was too awkward the other way around. Um, but yeah, I really like this design. Uh, this looks really nice, in my opinion. It's kind of similar to how Mumbo Jumbo's base is looking in Hermitcraft Season 5. Uh, I am taking a lot of inspiration from that, because I think his base is looking really, really, really cool with some of those designs. But this is slightly different, so I did incorporate that Dark Prismarine, which I really like the contrast of it to that Sea Lantern. It looks really good. Um, but yeah, I know a lot of people don't like the Prismarine blocks, but I think that you can make them look really good. I mean, not for like house building or like, I don't know, but you, if you're like you're building a temple, like temple theme, if you're using just those blocks and they look really, really good together, but with other types of blocks, not so much. The only types of things I think really look good with that maybe cyan colored concrete for sure and maybe cyan clay could look good or some grays and blacks maybe with like the concretes and clays um but yeah now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some unique things with the glass the, the light blue stained glass because this one kind of be like like atlantis themed that's what i'm kind of going for now i'm thinking about it like atlantis you know like a modern very modern city but also like has that sea temple-y feel to it um yeah, that's kind of what I'm going for with it, for sure. Um, but yeah, I think I think it'll come out really well, which it already has because I've seen it. But we're getting close to the end. Only a few more minutes, guys, of me talking to you um, after I recorded this. I actually recorded this earlier in the day. Um, so, um, but yeah, sorry about that. I'm going to have that audio fixed next time. So I'll be back to live in the next episode of Easygoing Survival, which will be episode 34, which is kind of hard to believe. We've done a lot of episodes now. I don't know. That's not bad, though. Over a course of a year, hopefully we'll have 40 by the time a year is. With a two-month break, that's not terrible. So I'm going to do is I'm going to have this stuff crisscross over the prismarine bricks like that and the glass right there. 
and then it's going to go up by a couple more blocks and then it's going to kind of I'm going to do this unique thing of the glass um, so you can kind of see I'm doing that some of that stuff on camera right now so that's pretty cool um, yeah there we go um, by the way guys just want to mention before we end off this episode uh, the next episode is going to be more of a housekeeping episode. I have a lot of nether tunnels I should finish up to get to the witch hut and the guardian farm and the wither farm and things like that. So I want to finish up some of those. And I also just need to fix up some of the hallways in my base right now and just kind of fix some things, clean, tidy some things up. You know how it goes when it comes. There's always just little things you leave behind in every project that I have to do. So, yeah, I'm going to cut to when the bridge is done now. So as you can see, the bridge is now complete. I have this nice, glassy, tall glass look to it. So basically, I kind of built as like a dome with that glass, which looked really, really nice. Um, as you can see, it looks—it doesn't look out of place at all. It just kind of looks just looks like a bridge crossing it, to be honest. Um, it'll look even cooler though once you have two more bridges behind it crossing that are like really big and grand. And as you can see. When you're going into it and you just see the two bridges crossing, it just looks awesome. And when we have four of those, it's just, you know, it's going to look much better. So, um, it's just going to look tons of better once we have the two other, the modern bridge, the kind of Greek architecture modern bridge theme, and the nether one. So, like, they kind of, like, a red nether brick one theme, one there. So, I think it's going to look really, really good once everything's done. Um, but yeah, so this has really come together, guys. We did a lot in this episode. We built this entire thing, which is a very it's a very large contraption. It took a lot of hoppers. It took like three stacks, like a stack of repeaters. It was, it was a big build. I mean, it's no small build for sure. And then we also kind of did some more base work and got a lot of inspiration all of a sudden about bridges. Um, it kind of dawned on me because back in episode three, when I built the first bridge, um... Maybe episode four. I'm not sure. Um, I wanted to have multiple bridges. And I was like, kind of like, you know what? No. Like a while ago, like months ago, I was like, I'm not going to do that. But now just all of a sudden, like, maybe I should. That'll look really awesome to have different themes. I won't get bored of using the same build style over and over and over again. But yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I hope you really have an easygoing day. And I hope you enjoyed this more kind of just chatty episode because I kind of messed up the audio and didn't record it for the other parts. Um, it made editing easier, to be honest. I like doing this. It's actually kind of fun. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your summer. I'm going to probably talk to you guys again, of course. But, you know, I'm I'm starting school, so, you know, the summer's over for me. But all I got to say, guys, is I hope you have an easygoing day. Bye-bye. See you all later. Uh...